know every birth, indeed every conception, is often taking place amidst the funky atmospheres of life. Mm -hmm. uh, the birth of Christ was not any different from that. If you think about first century Judea, the context of first century Judea was the context of oppression, mm -hmm. was the context of Roman occupation, mm -hmm. social and political challenges, civil conflict, greed and turmoil. This is the context in which we're talking about the birth of Jesus Christ. It seems strange to me that very often humanity has had the tendency to love in dark places and to hate in open spaces. We see that even recent, recently in Mumbai, don't we? Um, if, if you look at if you look at the life of Christ, though, even though you, you, you think about the celebration and all of this kind of weariness of context, if you think about your own lives and you think about the miracles that have taken, places, taken place in your life, well, then very, many of us can say, well, you know, along with the expectation, along with the joys, along with the miracles, we are, we've often always also had our share of trials. You know. I, I like to tell friends when they talk about the miracle of my education and the degrees and you know, a child from, from a very, very poor upbringing uh, and, and what it took. I often tell my friends, you know, I got every one of my degrees off of a trial. Mm. I learned to persevere and let the trial be the motivation for my successes and for my journeys in life. And so when I think about the Advent season, I want to invite us not simply to think about the context of our lives in terms of the miracles of our lives, but I want to encourage us not to rush away from the pains of our lives also because the pains and the miracles all work together to make us the beautiful people that we are this evening and to make us the people who strive for the successes and for the joys that, that we're praying about, the very small miracles in life, the great miracles in life. I thought about, when I thought about Advent season and when I thought about the work of reconciling ministries and uh, the miracle of, uh, of the birth of Jesus the Christ, uh, the circumstances of what we are, we are doing, and the pregnancy of the moment which we find ourselves in at this season in time in the life of reconciling ministry and LGBTQ persons all across the world. I think about uh, the context of our, our pain here in the States, particularly in the United, United Methodist Church, General Conference 2008, you know, the, the expectation that we had going into General Conference, and then the pain of bigotry of General Conference. Uh, the exuberance that I recently <coughs> experienced as a great fan of Barack Obama, and yet on the other hand, the great letdown of what took place in California with Proposition 8. You know, all of it working, you know, hand in hand to kind of make a context that um, is, is challenging at best, but that does not make me lose hope. I found out, as one person would say, with every level comes another devil. <laughs> and you just have to recognize that in life, that, that even as you strive to, 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 even as you strive to make an accomplishment, uh, uh, take place or, 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 or have birth, that there are going to be some letdowns and there are going to be some challenges and that, that the birth canal is just a funky place. <laughs> and you've got to work through all of that to get to the beauty of the birth at the manger. The story of the manger, I think, besides the context uh, and some of the pains of the, the birth at the manger, also ought to give each of us 
a high regard for human life. You know, the, the birth of the manger is nothing else. It's the great story of the gift of God in human form, that God would step down from heaven, clothe God's self in human flesh, and present God's self in the form of a child ought to make each of us just love life and cherish life and cherish creation. When I was preparing for tonight, I was thinking about, I love to read, and if you come to my office, you'll see books all <laughs> over the place. It's, you know, it's a great, and some, and with some of the students, it's a big joke. Uh, you know, we'll go to Lightsey's office and we'll get a book. We won't buy the book, we'll get a book, and we'll be able to get what we need. And, and I love it. I, I love that opportunity to share my books. Books are, to me, very sacred material. And so as I was thinking about tonight, I was thinking about a book by Toni Morrison that's called Beloved. Mm -hmm. And there's a scene in Beloved that reminds me of the Advent because it's so, it, it so points you to the beauty of humanity and of life. And if I could, if I can, if you'll allow me to. I want to read just a small passage from Toni Morrison's Beloved uh, that I want to give to you tonight as a gift, if I may. Uh, and the, the protagonist here is Baby Suggs, who is this unchurched female preacher. And she's speaking to a group of former slaves. And hear her words. Here she said, in this here place, we flesh, flesh that weeps, laughs, flesh that dances on bare feet in the grass, love it, love it hard. Yonder, they do not love your flesh. They despise it. They don't love your eyes. They just as soon pick them out. No more do they love the skin on your back. Yonder they flag, flay it. And oh, my people, they do not love your hands. Those they only use, tie, bind, chop off, and leave empty. Those they only destroy. Love your hands. Love them. Raise them up and kiss them. Touch others with them. Pat them together, stroke them on your face, because they don't love that either. You got to love it. You, this is flesh I'm talking about here. Flesh that needs to be loved. And so my friends, through the birth of a baby, we are reminded to love ourselves, to love each other, and to celebrate the gift of life. For God so loved Amen. that he gave flesh, that he gave face, eyes, and ears, hands. So love yourselves, my friends. Love the flesh that God gave you. Love the one whom God birthed you to be. Love yourselves, mm -hmm. members of reconciling mem ministry. Touch yourselves and love yourself when the church would only tolerate your beautiful self. Mm -hmm. Love yourself when the bigot would despise your wonderful self. Love yourself. Kiss yourself. Stoke yourself. Pat yourself on the back and be your beautiful, LGBTQ, straight and lovely, black and white woman and man and trans woman and trans men. Be your lovely, beautiful Amen. self. And love the God who created the lovely, beautiful you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen.